Okay, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to calculate the Z values and areas underneath the normal using R. So we've already taken a look at this with Excel, if you take a look at that video. If you're preferring to use R, it's a bit, I find it a bit easier to do this in R, but again, it's all command prompt versus using the Excel kind of spreadsheet to work through it. So let's go and take a look at kind of a mock question. Let's work it out using our tables. Let's then work it out using R in order to kind of compare what's happening. So let's take a look here. So we have, let's suppose we have a situation where we have X, we have X and we'll suppose that X is normally distributed, centered around a mean of 500 with a standard deviation of 50. In this case, let's presume that we're wanting to know what the probability is of witnessing a value of 580, or more, right? So 580 or more. Well, the way we would typically do this, we would go, we would convert our X to a Z and we would get a value of 580. Well, Z is our random variable minus our mean divided by our standard deviation. So, okay, Z is 580, that's our random variable minus our mean all over our standard deviation. Okay, so what do we get there? We get 80 over 50. That's gonna work out to be 1.60. Okay, so if we go typically the way we would do this, we would say, okay, let's go to our table and we'd get the probability of between our Z value of 1.60 and the mean. And we could go do that, we would look at our table and we would say, okay, 1.60, that's gonna be 0 0.4452. From here, this is half of our distribution, right? From the mean all the way out to infinity is 50%. We want to find this unknown bit. So in order to get that bit there, we would go 0.5 minus this guy, and this would give us our tail. So 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4452, and 0 0.5 minus 0.4452 gives us 0 0.0548. So about a 5.48% chance of witnessing that value or more extreme. Okay, neat. How about would we go through figuring this out in R? So that is we'd find our Z value first of 1.60. And with that Z value of 1.60, we would then want to find the probability. So let's go work this out. So first let's write down Hey, I have a Z value of 1.60, just so that we can keep that in our memory to view. We then wanna find out what is attached, what is the probability of this. To do this, what we wanna use is a function known as P norm. And for P norm, all we're saying is, hey, I want P norm of 1.60. If I do that, I hit enter. It says, okay, that there is 0.9452. Okay, 0.9452, that seems, that seems rather large, right? Let's go back to our, let's go back to see what we had. So 0 0.9452. 0 0.9452. Well, okay, we got 0 0.4452. This is saying 0 0.9452, what's, what's the discrepancy? Well, the discrepancy is that when R calculates this probability, what R is doing is they're saying, okay, here's your Z value of 1.60. We're not calculating between this and the mean. We're calculating this smaller. We're doing the cumulative probability of all the way from negative infinity to 1.60. And we're saying that, hey, all of this blue area here all of that is 0 0.9452, which really, if we think about that, this half over here, this guy, well, all of that is 
50%. So hey, if just up till this mean is 50% and the whole thing is 9452, well then yeah, this leftover is 4452. So it's giving us the same result, it's just calculating it from a different way. And that's important to recognize, right? Because if we want to get our final value of 0 0.0548, we're going to have to take the one that we've calculated, this entire blue area. In this case, we have to recognize that the whole distribution has an area of 1 and say, okay, so the whole thing is 1. We know that the blue is 0 0.9452, meaning that the bit left over, this red one, is going to be 0 0.0548. So, important distinction to be made as you go through that, right? And in this case here, this is really where the signs do work out to be important because right with the table, okay, 1.6, negative 1.6 would have given us the same area, right? Because between that Z and the mean. But let's say we went and we calculated instead something right there. And let's say this was instead, let's use a bit of a different number just to change things up. 1.55. Well, okay, 1.55. If we went to the table, we could look up 1.55 between 1.55 and the mean. Sorry, this would be negative 1.55, right? So the left of our mean, which is zero. On our table, 1.5 over to get 1.55, we would get 0.4394. Four three nine four as this area here. But let's say that we were interested in, hey, what is this value, whatever the uh, x is that's attached to it. Say we want to know what this guy bigger is. So all of this green area is what we are interested in. Well, okay, in this case here, if we wanted to use R to find this out, right? If we wanted to use our table, we could work this out quite rapidly from that. This whole half is 50%, 50% plus 0.4394. Now that's going to be 0.9394, right? So here we write the answer down. 0 0.9394 is that entire green area. But let's double check. Let's make sure that when we use our stat software, we get the same result. So switching over to our stat software, we had in this case, we had a Z of negative. 1.55, right? That's where that negative is important. And now if we do P norm of our Z, we get an area of 0 0.060570, right? This given our very precise one. We don't need to go that precise. Let's go 0 0.0606, right? So if we go 0 0.0606, we are going to get, um, so in this case here, R is telling us 0 0.0606. Why is R telling us this? Which area is it giving us? Well, the area that R is giving us is the Z value that we looked up, negative 1.55 or smaller, right? It's giving us that cumulative again. So it's giving us this tail, a uh, yellow tail there as 0 0.0606. Okay, great. We found out what that cumulative, that's not what we're interested in. We want the right side. So again, we'd recognize that the whole thing is 100%. So we could go one minus 0 0.0606. And sure enough, what do we get? We get 0 0.9394. We get that green area left over. So Perfect, it works out. We just have to keep in mind that the way that the stat software calculates works out these probabilities is different from how the table works out these probabilities. That's the big distinction. And if you're going to switch between the two, make sure you keep track as to what probability each one is actually reporting for you. What if we want to go the other way though? What if we want to go, let's go same example. Let's say we have 500. So normal distribution of X, we have a mean of 500 and we have a standard deviation of 50. In this scenario, let's suppose that we wanna know, hey, what value of X 
is required to be in the top decile. Right? So that is for the top decile of results such that, hey, that value of x or bigger is 10% of observations. Keep in mind, the opposite of that is that if that's 10%, well, this guy here, that's 40%. Or alternatively, all the way out to negative infinity, that's going to be 90%. So how do we solve this? Our typical case, right? Our typical case, we would go and we would need to start with a z. Right? In this case, we're going z to x. And what we do is we'd go to our z table and we'd say, hey, what is the probability that's closest to 0 0.4000? And you go to your table and you quickly realize there is no 0 0.4000, but the closest was 0 0.3997, which has a Z value of 1.28. Okay, from here, we can then calculate our X. We could use our standardization formula, Z equals X minus mu, all over sigma, we know z, we know mu, we know sigma. So 1.28 equals x minus 500 all over 50. And that gives us, what does that give us? 564. So hey, if you had a value of x of 564 or greater, you would be in the top decile of this value of x. But okay, what if we wanted to find out this z value a different way? Keep in mind, we had to kind of estimate this. We didn't have 0 0.400 exactly. We had to look up the next closest. So let's just jump back. We'll jump back to R. We'll take a look at what's going on there. And then we'll move and calculate our z. So, okay, let's keep in mind, probability we're looking for is 0 0.400. Okay, again, the way that the stat software works is not interested in probability between Z and the mean. The stat software is interested in the probability between our Z and negative infinity, the cumulative. So that is, we're interested in this 90%. So let's go take a look at that 90%. So over here, in this case, let's go and I'm going to say that I have a P of 0 0.90. That's the probability out in that extreme. And in order to get the corresponding result in this case, I want my Q norm. There we go. Q norm, and I'm going to want the Q norm of P. And object P not found because I said P equals, not P arrow. There we go. So P arrow equals 0 0.9. Q norm of P then gives me a value of, and we see that down over here, right? We get a P of 1.281552. So, hey, pretty close to what we looked up at the table, right? We just said, okay, 3997 was pretty close. Let's use 1.28. Yeah, we see that was a good call, right? We see that was an okay call. So, if we jump back to our whiteboard, we see right here, yeah, 1.28 is the Z value, exactly the one that I worked out. What about if I wanted to find the lowest tenth? All right, so say in this case here, I wanted this case of the bottom decile, and I want to know, hey, what X value was attached to that? Well, in order to find out what X value is attached to that, I needed to find out what Z value was attached to that. Well, again, everything in the stat software is looking at the cumulative probability. So I'd be looking at a cumulative probability of just 10%. So if I jump back over, take a look at that guy, what do I get? I get 0 0.10 is my new P. Oh, big surprise. My new reported Z value, 1 point, sorry, negative 1.28. Right, negative 1.28, no big surprise. That's what I figured it would be because, right, why, why would I figure that? Well, if that's 10%, well, then again, this guy right here would be 40%, which means again, 
0 0.3997, that's the best I could do for 40, which is my 1.28. Okay, so we've seen how we can work out using our the different areas underneath a normal distribution using either our p norm or our q norm function, and we did that to get this guy here. Right, big thing keeping in mind is that hey, anytime we use stat software to find out the area underneath the curve, it was always that point all the way to negative infinity. It was always the left hand side. What we're going to be taking a look at next is how we can do the same thing for our t distribution. And in doing the same thing for our t distribution, that same kind of rule applies. We're always looking at the value we're interested in to the left. So let's kind of update this example a little bit. Let's take a look at a scenario and let's see how we do it. So let's jump over. Let's say again that we're dealing with a distribution. And we'll say that this is, in this case here, centered around 500. This is our distribution of sample means. But in this case, we don't know what the population standard deviation is. That is, we are looking at the sample standard error. And that is the sample standard deviation of x all over root n. Let's suppose that guy there is 50 and we're pulling out a sample size of 25. Again, pulling out a sample size of 25, we have that implicit assumption that needed to be met such that our underlying population was symmetric. Otherwise, we'd need that bigger sample size. What does that work out to? Well, that works out to 10. So, okay, I have my standard errors here of 10. From here, Let's suppose that I was interested in saying, hey, what's the probability of pulling out a value of 515 or more, right? And that is, we would be looking for this guy here that is on our traditional T stats table. That'd be our value of alpha. Problem is, we don't know what that value is. We would have no idea how to figure that out. We couldn't really work through that, but we can in this way. And in this way here, what we're going to do is we're going to convert that x bar to a t n minus 1. So, okay, t25. So we're going to convert to a t24. And the way we standardize to a t, same way we standardize to a z, right? Our t24 is going to be x bar minus mu all over sample standard deviation root n. So in that case there, 515 minus 500 all over my standard errors. I worked those guys out to be 10. So 15 over 10, that's going to give me 1.5 as my T statistic. Okay, 1.5, I'm now looking for this area all the way out to infinity. Well, okay, if we went to our t tables, we'd be lost. We couldn't do anything at this point, right? We could maybe estimate it if under t24, we had a t value that was kind of close to this, but that'd be a nightmare to try to figure out. So what we're going to look at here is how we can use r in order to get that. So let's jump over to r and let's see how we can find out the corresponding area for a t of 1.5. Again, what I want us to keep in mind is that the way that all this stats program works is they're going to take t 1.5 and they're going to calculate this area. They're going to go all the way to negative infinity and they're going to work out this, which not exactly what we're looking for, but once we have that, we can now adjust to the one that we want. So let's jump and take a look. So here we have our, just our standard console here. What we're looking for is we have a, let's go a T24, which was 1.50. So I'm just gonna save that so that I have that, I can refer to it. In this case here to find out the area underneath the T distribution for a T24 at a T statistic of 1.5, we're gonna use the function PT. I'm going to start writing that down, hit tab, and it wants to go P2 key. No, no, we want just PT tab to open that up. And we have that little highlighting part there saying what we need. We only need to worry about the first two. The first one being, hey, our value of the T24. So we can just put in T24 call, but we already labeled it, or we could put in 1.50. We then want to put in our degrees of freedom, in this case, 24. Hit control enter to process that guy and we get our probability, 0.92667. So 0.92667, let's jump back and put that guy there in. So 
that was 0 0.92667. So okay, that there was the blue probability, right? Like we said, that worked out from 515 to the left. And if we think about that, yeah, okay, that, that makes sense. We're looking at at least 50%, right? Right here at the 500, that would have been 50%. We're to the right of it, so okay, having a bigger value than 50% is making sense for us. If we go something like 0.32, I'd be concerned I did something wrong, right? And that's where the visualization really helps us in order to make sure that we're getting an outcome as we expected. So, great, but how do we get this red area? Well, again, the whole distribution sums to one. So that is, if the whole distribution sums to one, this guy is going to be one minus... 0.92667. So that is, that's going to be 0 0.0733. And so I can work out, hey, great, 7.33% probability of witnessing that sample mean or greater. So there we go. We have how we can use R in order to work out the probabilities based off of a T. We can also use this to help us for confidence intervals. So let's suppose that we wanted to create a 70% confidence interval around our value of x bar. Okay, so visualizing that to see what exactly we're trying to do, we would have our t distribution. And what we're essentially saying is, okay, there's the mean. Uh, we're saying that we want to get some cutoff, some cutoff, such that in the middle here, this middle bit, that was 70%. Well, if that middle bit was 70%, well, that's saying that all of our tails together, so the white area being the tails here, that these guys all together are 30%. So that would be 15% in that tail and 15% in that tail. So what we're interested in then is for our T24, what is our T statistic that is attached to those two points? And okay, what we could do is we can now go back to R, we could tell R to calculate this for us. Keeping in mind that when we put a probability in and we want the outcome of the T, hey, here's a probability, what's my T? Well, the probability that I'm gonna put in is always from the T that I'm interested in to negative infinity. From the T that I'm interested in to negative infinity. So that is this first guy here, that would be a probability of 15%. The second one here, that would be a probability of 85%. Keep in mind though, this is a symmetric distribution. Ideally, once we just find one of these guys, the other one is gonna be the same, just with the opposite sign. So where this guy is negative, this guy would be positive. So let's go work out what our T stat would be for a 15% probability. So in this case, what we want to do to work this guy out is we're going to use a bit of a different function. First, I'm going to say, hey, I am going to have a probability of 15%, just so I can remember that, right? So I don't forget that, that that's what I'm dealing with. My function in this case is going to be QT. And no, not Q2 key, but just QT. And in this case, what I need to know is my P and my degrees of freedom. So in this case here, I can just go P and then 24 degrees of freedom. This P would just be calling forward that guy, or I could put in the actual value of 0 0.15. Control enter to execute, and I'm gonna get the corresponding T statistic down here of negative 1.0593. Right, we can make sure that this is the same. We can put in, again, our other QT, in this case for 0 0.85 with 24 degrees of freedom. And we see that we get the same value, but just positive in this case. So negative, positive, working out to be the same. Again, we expected that symmetric distribution. So end of the day, what did we get? We got our T statistic of 1.059. So let's jump back and let's take a look at that. So negative 1.059 positive 1.059, meaning back to our question, building this 70% confidence interval around X bar, 
That is x bar plus or minus my t24 for that 70% all over sample standard deviation root n. Okay, from there, what do I know? x bar, that's my point estimate, that's 15. Plus or minus 1.059, I got that guy. Standard errors, sample standard deviation all over root n, I calculated that guy up here. That was 10. So let's just put that guy in. So what do I have? I have my point estimate of 515. That's my x bar. Plus or minus my fuzz. That's going to be 10.59. That's my uncertainty around my estimate. And so altogether, I get my confidence interval ranging from, on the high end, 515 plus 10.59. 525, 59, and then on the other side, I'm going to get 515 minus 1059, so 504, 41. And I can work out a confidence interval. I can get the corresponding t values for any confidence interval using r in this fashion rather than playing around with the table. Right? Keep in mind, to do this in the table, what we would have had to do is we'd have to find this value of alpha for a 24 degrees of freedom. If we took a look at our table, there is no alpha of 15% reported. We'd be done. We'd be lost. We could not continue. But using R, we can calculate the exact probability and thus the exact T value that's attached to it and go from there. If you have any questions about this, if you weren't quite able to replicate the same results, if you have any issues working through this, please feel free to reach out to me either through the D12 Frequently Asked Questions or by email. Thanks.